we have Grant up here? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always even to the end of the age. You have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your heart, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gift that God gave you in your baptism? Do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his ways? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Through Jesus 
Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Something strange were happening to you. 
of rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief, or an evildoer or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome of those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls a faithful creator while doing good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I called my son. 
Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious, and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping in loud lamentation. Rachel, weeping for her children, she refused to be comforted because they are no more. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a city called Nazareth, that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled, he shall be called a Nazarene. This is the Gospel of the Lord. This morning, perhaps one of the most heartbreaking gospel readings of all. The terrible, unspeakable, inhumane, inhuman, diabolical thing that happens in this gospel text. One can only be heartbroken and wonder at the misery of poor, poor King Herod. Oh wait, what did I just say? The infant children of Bethlehem in the entire region, a few thousand of them, are murdered by King Herod. Certainly that is the heartbreaking part of the text, and yet Paul moves us in, as Jesus did, to a mystery. Blessed are you when you are persecuted for the name of Jesus. 
Blessed are you. It is a powerful sign that the Holy Spirit is with you when the world hates you. Indeed, thousands of children of Bethlehem and the region around were murdered and went directly to heaven as being martyrs, not old enough to be martyrs in will, but martyrs in deed. They went to heaven for the name of Jesus Christ, for which they were killed and murdered by an unbelieving world. I would say that the really miserable and wretched tragedy of the text is King Herod. History remembers Herod as Herod the Great. And if we were looking at it in only a worldly sense, we'd have to agree. Herod brought order. He brought economic growth. He brought military strength. He was born with a Jewish father and an Arab mother, half Gentile, under Jewish law, not even half Jewish, above, outside of everyone else in the kingdom of Judea. Herod should never have been king. He had no claim, he had no right, he had no bloodline, but what he did have was a giant stack of a thousand pounds of gold paid to his sponsors, Octavian Augustus Caesar and Mark Antony in Rome. They sent their legions and deposed the aged and decrepit Hasmonean dynasty, and they made Herod king. Think of it. A man who became, began with no name, no lineage and no right, who builds an empire and seizes a crown and makes himself king, who embarks on a building project around that kingdom of fortresses and bases and barracks. He raises an army so large and creates a nation so powerful economically. Had Herod lived another 20 years, he might have won their independence from the Roman Empire just by default. He was the kind of dictator everyone loved to hate. The trains all ran on time, everybody had a job, everything was going super well, except for one problem. The king was a megalomaniac and a paranoid. The man married one of the last Hasmonean women of the family to legitimize his claim. But when Herod realized that his sons that he bore by her, or that she bore for him, had a better claim to the throne than he did, he murdered both of his children. Then he murdered his wife and replaced her. In fact, his whole life was one of murderous rage. He hung on to power, even when old and sick, he never became too weak to slaughter members of his own family. Even the Romans were shocked by his behavior. Octavian Caesar is, is said to have remarked, it was safer to be a pig in the house of Herod than one of his children, because as a part Jew, he wouldn't touch a pig. Herod was this ruthless, ruthless, but faithless individual. In a worldly sense, he accomplished so much but in a spiritual sense, he accomplished nothing. He held on to power up until his suffering, miserable death, and it didn't mean anything, because the kingdom was left to people not even as smart as him, and certainly even just as faithless as he was. Herod paid for his crime, by the way. He paid not just with eternal damnation, which is reserved for the faithless, he paid from his flesh in this world. Herod, in his old age, developed a form of leprosy that eats away as your body rots while you're still living. According to the historian Josephus, he first developed it in what's called his private regions. They say he went insane late at night trying to scrape the maggots out of his own flesh with a knife. Well, that's pretty graphic. But this is a tale of two men, not just Herod, the other being Joseph. You see, Joseph has what Herod did not, faith. Herod will die and he will go to hell. Everything that he has built, his wealth, his power, his fortresses, his castles, everything will end up in rubble. 
The Jewish rebels would use those fortresses in 70 AD, and the Romans would grind them all down. Long after Herod's death, the final insult to injury, his legacy blotted out. The wicked King Herod goes on to hell, and everything that he built in this world, everything that he murdered for, lied and fornicated to defend, everything that he swindled and deceived to gain, crumbles away. Joseph, on the other hand, is the man who is the father. He's a man who is the guide, the protector, the planner. In every way, Joseph is a faithful steward of the kingdom. Yeah, of the kingdom. See, because if the genealogies had not been lost, if the corruption of the Romans had not come in, if not the, for the bribery of men like Herod, the actual lineage of David arrived at Joseph and Mary and therefore Jesus. Joseph.